Hey guys, this is Kevin aka Kman1 coming at you with another episode of Self-Sufficient Scape. In the last episode I really didn't give much indication of what I'd be doing in this one besides finally buying the, the first bond that I'm going to be buying with gold on this account, but I also want to go ahead and show that I now have just over 100,000 Dungeoneering tokens, which you take to the rewards trader right here outside of Daemonheim. I mentioned that the first reward I wanted to get was the Charming Imp. And the reason that I want the Charming Imp is because it automatically picks up all of the charms that monsters drop. Wholly unrelated to anything that just happened, here's the Wolf Whistle quest complete. Anyways, as I was saying, the Charming Imp is a very useful item for summoning because it automatically picks up any charms dropped by monsters. And you can wear it in the pocket slot which you can also attach it to the tool belt, but that requires 500 Slayer points, and I don't have that many points to throw around right now. But now that I have this, I am going to look at getting back on the Slayer grind within the near future. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and get up to 90 combat before starting Slayer again, just so I can start with Simona instead of uh, going back to Kaldor, but I'll, I'll have to decide that. First and foremost, though, I am going to get back on the quest grind because I actually kind of enjoy doing these novice quests because you can just plow through them like nothing. And so it's just one thing after another. I feel like I'm just... I feel like I'm making so much progress even though a lot of these really aren't that valuable in terms of rewards. I don't know. It's just, a, it's just something that I'm enjoying a lot more than I expected to. Like I said I was going to do, I did some more Abyss rune crafting during the, the time between releasing the videos, and I made a cool 3.3 mil, and I got level 65 rune crafting, which is pretty good. And I now have enough money to buy a bond. I'm gonna check the current price of them, just to see, oh cool, they're a little bit under 16 mil. I'll go ahead and, I'll put it at 16 mil. I didn't wanna buy it if it was gonna dip too much into my cash stack, because I would still like to have a little bit of money, uh, between having a bond. I'll just leave that offer in. It should buy within the next hour or so, hopefully. Um, yeah, anyways, like I said, I think in the last clip, but possibly in the clip before that, I do want to get back onto the novice quest grind, just because it, it feels good to feel like I'm making a lot of progress in a short amount of time, even though I know that a lot of these quests really aren't that valuable. It's just a personal preference for where I'm at in the account right now. I'm finishing up the Bringing Home the Bacon quest, which is a novice quest, but it does have a repeatable aspect to it, in that I think once a week you get either 10 pig summoning pouches, which it depends on what you chose during the quest, but I'm pretty sure you can customize it later, or you can get bacon, which is a food item. There are better familiars in pretty much every aspect that you can get. I think maybe the, the prayer altar one is decent, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but you're you're probably better off choosing another familiar. Finishing up Hazil Cult, nothing really special about this quest, just a little bit of thieving experience and a few coins. Fun stuff. I appreciate the way they handled Imp Catcher in RS3 because they kind of removed the random aspect of having to keep killing imps until you find the right colored beads. But if you're not an Iron Man in old school, it's a way faster quest because you can just buy the beads. And they cost, what, like 10,000 each maybe? Anyways, I got an amulet that's actually not terrible. I think it's worse than in Glory, but I mean, if you're just starting off an account, it's fine, and you get a little bit of magic XP. Fun stuff. I'm in the middle of the Impressing the Locals quest, and I figure I probably should have showed this off sooner than now, but it's something I forget about on my main, even, and it's... It's your decision whether or not it's worth it to you. If you go into the player-owned port portal that's in Port Serum, I know that's a lot of times to say port, but there's this girl named Meg who has a, a diamond over her head that she's a distraction and diversion. I'm Meg, by the way. I'm, and um, basically, ooh. once a week, I think, you can answer questions about adventuring for her, and then, depending on the answers you give her and a couple other random factors I'm not entirely sure about, she will give you an experience lamp. 
uh, once a week. So it's useful. It can only give you experience in one of eight or nine skills, the, the skills associated with the, the player on ports themselves. But you need level 90 in order to really get started in player owned ports, and I'm nowhere close to that, and I have never really done them before because I don't like mini games like this. But I'll probably show it off at least a little bit in the the hopefully not too distant, but probably but probably at least a little bit distant future. I'm finishing up the Impressing the Locals quest, which I, I just spoke about like in the last clip. Uh, it gives you access to a region called the Ark, and it's got a lot of different content in it, but stuff that I won't be getting into at this particular time, because A, it's mostly higher leveled stuff, and B, it's stuff that's not really relevant to the goals I have for this account right now. Jungle Potion sure is a quest that exists, right? It's a low level quest and it gives you a little bit of herbal or XP. But just a quick word of advice, if you, you should hold on to an extra snake weed and rogue's purse for use in the quest Zogre Flesh Eaters. I don't know if it's a master quest cape requirement, but it's an extra unlock that you can have for an herb lore shop. And I don't know if it's super worth your time, but I figure I might as well show that these are the two herbs that you need additional ones after the quest. In case you're inclined to, to get involved with that sort of thing. Ah, Let Them Eat Pie, a quest with rewards that probably would have been useful if I had done it my first time in Taverly, but is completely outdated now. I'm going to be getting back on the Slayer grind. I actually already did a couple tasks and got up to level 60 Slayer, which gets you uh, Aberrant Spectres, which is the first decent enough money Slayer monster. Um, it's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it's good for lower levels. And the reason I'm wanting to do Slayer, I'll get into in a minute. But something that's really valuable for you to do is if you go to the Lumbridge Swamp and talk to Wizard Chambers, he's like at the dot connecting Lumbridge Swamp and the Gates of Al-Karid. Uh, he will teleport you to this big island right here, which is actually the god Tuska's body. Spoilers, I guess, but it's available to level 1 noobs, so... I guess I shouldn't be too worried about spoilers, but anyways, there's a minigame that you can play here where you can buy some actually really, really good rewards. Specifically the one that I'm going for that's really useful for Slayer is this ability called Tuska's Wrath. Basically what it does is you can deal a hundred times your Slayer level in instant nuke damage to any monster you currently have on task. Like right now I have Bronze Dragons, which I really don't want to do. Part of why I want to get to Simona instead of sticking with Kaelder, but I would be able to nuke them right now for a hundred times. That's six thousand damage. That's really, really solid, uh, and it helps speed up Slayer tasks a significant amount. It's got a two-minute cooldown, so it's not like you're constantly nuking them, but it's it's very, very valuable. Anyways, I don't want to give you like a whole rundown of this mini game, but I will do at least like a basic idea of these are the strategies you should be using in each island that sort of thing so for this island where there is you know like fire raining down from the sky and all that you want to go to this altar and grab a relic of life and then dig into this grave and then you'll basically get sent to like the underworld where there are two types of spirits you're going to want to climb up the rock face. Sometimes the lost soul spawn down here, but I'm not that lucky this time. But anyways, you want to claim the lost soul, which will charge the relic of life. And then you want to release the tormented soul. And what this will do is it'll switch you back over to the normal realm. And then you get into a quick fight with this guy. I should probably switch it over to my melee action bar. And you'll kill him real quick. This is probably the worst island in terms of being able to get all the anima you possibly can but basically if you follow this strategy you'll get as close to the maximum amount as you can you can get a maximum of 25 percent uh anima per island but fortunately you can make up anima you didn't get in later islands so i'm actually really glad that this is the first one anyways after you've killed that you get a little bit of anima and you jump down interact with the altar turn that in for additional anima, and then 
dig the grave and repeat the process over and over again for as long as you've got on the island. I think you've got like five minutes per island. So like I said, this one's really hard to get up to the 25% that you can get, but it's doable. Uh, you'll probably end up making up anything that you couldn't get in later islands. Fair warning. This next island, basically you just run around in circles and whenever you get to the active rune stone, just charge it and you'll shoot up through the percentage. This is a pretty easy one to get max, but sometimes you get screwed and you have to run a lot more than you're actually able to just charge the stone. I'll see if I can get the max, but I'm glad that we're getting the less reliable ones out of the way early. The order that they're in is random, and sometimes you just get screwed over by what you get. But anyways, after you charge this for a few times, it'll relocate, and so now it's on this island, and you can only run these clockwise. So I'm sorry if you really, really wanted to run them counterclockwise. The island with the lightning is the easiest island. Just build the pylons. Just go in a circle and build the pylons. You will have way more than enough anima. Uh, this is actually probably the best one to catch up on Lost Anima, but I did actually manage to catch up to 50% from the Agility and Divination one. So, anyways, build the pylons, go in a circle. They'll be destroyed and you can do other stuff in the area, but it's just, just build the pylons. I'd say the last island, but again, the order of the islands are randomized. But anyways, the the vine island, basically what you're supposed to do is you should chop these vines and you'll get mysterious herbs. Uh, wink, wink, 420 blaze it. Uh, but you chop the vines that are growing on the ground. And then once you've got a couple stockpiled up is how I prefer to do it is you can crush them into special powder which again wink wink nudge nudge and then you feed it to the roots of the tree in the middle and those will continue to grow outward mm -hmm. sorry about my phone i'm in a group text message that i would rather avoid at the present moment uh but then you nurture the root and it'll grow out towards these little buds right here. And then you can collect the seeds and you turn in the seeds and they give like 8% or 6% anima a piece. It's the best way to do it. And this is also a very consistent island to be able to get up to the maximum anima. Sometimes you get a little bit unlucky, but very, very rarely in my experience. So I finished the round. If you get up to 100% anima, you get 1000 reward points and each game takes about 20 minutes, so you can get 3,000 points an hour. It's not very good, but the biggest thing, like I said, I'm going for is Tuska's Wrath, so I need to play this three more times, but I should mention the Tuska armor. You get War Priest of Tuska armor is the full name of it, and it is actually very good hybrid armor. All of the War Priest sets are. Each different set has a different effect, and I will mention them if they come up, but if not, just ask me, and I'll include a link in the description to one of the videos, probably this one since I'm discussing them right now. Uh, but they're really, really good hybrid armor that scale with your level. They increase at levels 25 is the first level you can wear them, then at level 50 and 75. Uh, and because they're hybrid armor, they give you good defensive bonuses for if you're fighting like a boss or some slayer monster at a high level that uses different types of uh, attack styles uh, and it's especially good for iron men who don't always have access to really good equipment anyways i'm just going for tuska's wrath right now but i might come back and get the war priest of tuska set later i finally saved up enough reward points to buy tuska's wrath it only takes like an hour and a half to do it so i probably shouldn't even be complaining but it can get kind of tedious after a while but i now do have and i think it's under hit points and defense abilities so yeah here it is i'm just gonna throw that onto the action bar here but the reason i've been wanting to train slayer is because after i got my bond i realized that there is a summer event going on where instead of the normal uh bond transfer rate 
where you can get 14 days for one up to 45 days for three. You can actually get three months, so 90 days membership for five bonds. So I do want to see if I can get up to those five bonds before my membership runs out, just to have it be a little bit more efficient that way. Um, I'm not sure if I can do it because I am going to be starting back at school soon. Uh, I've I've got some summer semester classes that I'm not super looking forward to because they're going to cut in my time to be able to goof off and make videos. But I, I do want to see if I can manage to grind up enough money for four more bonds before my membership runs out, which should be in like a little while because I do have 45 days of membership. Anyways, with that in mind, I am going to be training Slayer because Slayer is great money. So thank you very much for watching, and I guess I will see you next time.